My name is Christopher Brown. I wrote a podcast called The Vision Nasties Podcast, and I wrote a book called The Vision Nasties Moment. So I kind of know a little bit about these films that were from the early 80s on VHS or Betamax and contained horrible, terrifying things. The first thing I'd say is people love to be outraged. When Elvis went on stage in, well, for 1956 on television to sing Hound Dog, people were so outraged they tried to ban the TV program entirely based on the fact they shaked his hips. But here we are in the 80s, 90, early 1980s, and VHS, in particular in the UK, was a big deal, a huge deal. And the reason was it gave us choice that we didn't used to have. We were able to see things that we wouldn't normally see. It was uh, unregulated, much like the internet, and you get things like this, Driller Killer. A lovely VHS, which involves a man getting drilled in the head in the middle of the street. Um, it was, uh, this lack of regulation meant that people kind of well, it was like the Grindhouse of America, effectively. And people like Mary Whitehouse, God love her, was very offended by the idea and tried to stop us watching them. Mary Whitehouse used to go after like, things in the BBC because the BBC felt they always had to comment on what she'd said. But instead, uh, at this point, she went for uh, VHS. And from there, the Daily Mail got involved, particularly in banned video sadism and ban this sick filth, and this created a great deal of interest for a long period of time from the mid-80s through to 1984. Now, the thing is, stories have to get repeated all the time, so you kind of get uh, things like this hooking of the video junkie, like watching a horror film at home would somehow make you into a, well, a pervert, effectively, and you get rumours would become facts. So here, for example, is the idea that a snuff film from South America would be available from your local shop. Obviously, bollocks, that's from that story that was put in the Daily Mail, and that's the exact story that meant that people thought that snuff movies were real. There was a huge, great deal of uh, excitement about this and a demand that the public, that something was done in the public. Children in Video Peril was one of the headline there from the Express, obviously copying the mail, as they do now. And the police seized videos and burned them. People went to court, people went to prison just for selling Evil Dead, dr Driller Killer, Last House on, le on the Left. And this kind of build up was always in constant. So this woman came and got involved. L lo lovely Maggie, who decided, interestingly enough, it came out over Christmas, wanted to ban sex toys because she thought they were against morality, decided that she needed to do something. And from there, um, well, th there was a great deal of pressure. For example, this was a letter that Mary Whitehouse sent to Maggie, which said that she had to be slapped. This is some of the more toned down stuff that was going on at the time. Because when you ask a seven-year-old what they love, they say, oh yeah, I've seen all these films, they're amazing. And films got banned. And they got banned for a long time. Um, I think people kind of forget the period of time that this kind of um, censorship happened. It happened from basically from 1984, 85, right the way through to 1999. So you can get things like The Exorcist, um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I think it's kind of changed the way we see films today. Um, there's a lovely 18 certificate there now, and I think people kind of assume that things are a lot better now. So, so what? You know, what? It's all different now. We're kind of a, a liberal society, excited and and, and, you know, not really that bothered about, you know, what, what, what's happening. I mean, certainly, you know, you can see anything on the internet now. Well, that's kind of true. But this bloke, who's a bit funny about what he's like, well, he's a mini Thatcher, isn't he, in a, in a lot of ways, or at least he tries to pretend he is. So there's always an, an attempt to kind of cut back on people's um, wish or to, cut, or to censor. And it's, once again, we're getting articles like this, which basically says that if you look at porn, you won't want to get married because you'd be quite, quite happy just, you know, <laughs> knocking one out. Now, I'm going to suggest possibly that that's bollocks. I don't know, lads. I don't know. But, but this kind of story has led to what actually is happening right now at the moment, which is pornography, and no one ever really argues about porn because you don't really want to get into the details of it, is being banned in this country. And we, this year, well... This, I love this. I love Britain. I love people. This, we, what happened was loads of people decided to go to Westminster and do a, I would say not a sit-in, but a face sit-in. So loads of people lay on the floor and they kind of sat on their faces. In December, beautiful stuff. But basically what I'm saying is, and this is kind of the point, it's all very exciting and, and, and video nasties are great things, but people are still trying to take our liberties now and possibly we should be a little bit more like 
Bruce Campbell and try and fight them off. Thanks very much. I'm all shook up. Mm -hmm.